Hi, I'm Jim. I'm Elizabeth. And this is the St. John Wine Time. This is the latest St. John Wine Times ever. Late night St. John Wine Time. Ooh, St. John Blue Steel Rider Wine Times. After dark. After dark. I wear my sunglasses. Uh, in the dark? That's right. That's right. So, so does Corey Hart, actually. Oh, uh, there we go. Yeah, there we huh. go. So, what have we got tonight, Liz? Tonight we've got a little Italian treat that the Italians call... Pasta? Um, <clears throat> well, no. Not per se. Per se. We've got Marcella per se. Oh. Marsala. Do you know why we have Marsala? We have Marsala because this year Nigella Lawson was doing her Nigelissima series of um, recipes she loves after the style of Italy. Ah, and Italy. one of them used Marsala and I decided to try one of them and so I went and I bought a whole bottle of Marsala just for this recipe which turned out to be okay but not that great. That's an important lesson. When Nigella tells you to do something, you should do it, but it won't be that great. I uh, know, sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. But important footnote to that lesson. Just not always. Uh, not always. Well, uh, that's very interesting. What uh, region of Italy does this particular beverage hail from? This particular beverage hails from... Let's see... Um, you know what? It doesn't actually say... A pan-Italian wine, then. It's a pan-Italian wine. I think Marsala might actually be a region of Italy or a place in Italy. Huh. Do you suppose? Could well be. Maybe it's the Italian like version of Marseille. Oh. Maybe it's Marseille's wine from Italy. Maybe. Could be. Either way, I think that we should get into a little consideration of the bottle. The branding. Ah, the were. branding. An important prelude to a wine. This is a bottle of Floriovo, Originale Specialita Florio. I think that there are some flowers involved in the making of this wine. I wonder if we'll be able to detect floral scents in it. Probably not. Hmm. You'll just take shoe polish and floor polish like you always do. Well, I don't know. It might have a different flavor profile. That's right. It could have a different flavor profile. We always have to take into consideration the merits of the individual we're drinking. So, mm. now we've considered the label, inside and out. That's right. We're going to uh, try the smell. Now, it's interesting, I think, Liz, that you found out about this on a cooking show. Does this mm. mean that this is, in effect, a cooking wine? Certainly not, Jim. What this means is that this can be a very tarty wine, as in slutty, a kind of wine that you find just hanging around on the street corner looking for anything you got for it. What and an extraordinary country Italy is. It certainly is an extraordinary country. So I think what we've got here is a little tart of a glass of Marsala. I think there are certainly nicer versions of Marsala, but NB liquor don't bring them home. It's certainly a mellow sort of um, mm. Mm. ruby shade to it. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know that. if I'd quite say ruby. I, would, I find it a little browner than ruby. I would say it's almost the shade of... Tawny port? Eh, a little bit. I was thinking more Pepsi syrup. Ah, uh, yes. yes. Pepsi syrup, definitely. Pepsi syrup. And if you look at the uh, legs, you'll find that they... <clears throat> descend from the pelvis very slowly. I would say it has less legs, more of a hem. I think it's quite important to do what they call the frog when you are testing the wine. What's the frog, please? Well, the frog is when you tilt the wine against the side of the glass and let the legs develop as from a tadpole turning into a frog. Ooh, I remember one time watching one of my cousins disturb and actually kill a little, uh, shall we call it a cluster of tadpoles at St. Martin's. I think that was quite a formative moment for me. I was only about two. What effect do you think that had on your personality? I think it made me afraid of destruction hmm. because I watched how he poked a stick at a bunch of things that resembled egg, egg yolks. 
and made them die. Did you welcome destruction before that moment? I probably did. I probably liked to destroy things myself. I probably wielded many sticks at many things that looked like eggs. And yet, at that point, I looked into the face of God and I thought, no, no. Formative experiences, even in childhood. All brought out by the Marsala. Now this uh, has certainly an odor of um, cherry cough syrup, I would say. <clears throat> I'm immediately I getting that. I think it's got a little odor of amaretto, harkening back to one of our recent wine times. And I think it has a certain marzipan uh, smell to it. Definitely. Definitely. Good. Definitely. Good. 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 Marzipan. Marzipan. Mmm. <clears throat> like those little marzipan creatures that you're never sure if you should eat or if you should just look at them. Or maybe eat them. Yeah, ultimately you eat them. Do you? I often don't. Mmm. Yeah, a certain dusky smell, too. I think uh, there's, there's definitely some dust coming up from it. Like that song, Black Velvet. Yeah. In a little boy's smile. Black Velvet. In that slow, slow southern, southern style. style. A new religion that will bring you to your knees. What religion was that? I believe that was Presbyterianism. Ah. Yes. It's not that new of a religion. <clears throat> nope, but... Recent enough, if you were born Catholic. There you go. Like we were. Cheers to Catholicism. Marsala. And the Pope. Well, it has a definite candied flavor. I would say it has a definite excessive flavor. I mean, who needs that much flavor in one sip? Not me. Definitely uh, a certain amount of cough syrup there. Mm, coats the tongue, roof of the mouth, <clears throat> palate, uh, all together. It's too much. It's just too much. Certainly sticks there, like a sticky, glutinous substance. I think it was designed by a three-year-old. And a unicorn. I think they got together in a kitchen and they were like, we're going to make today. Like, here's mom's <clears throat> cough syrup and Exactly. Mom's nail polish remover. And Let's then, mix them together. And then I think that the unicorn put a can of Pepsi on the stove and boiled and some it down. Some crushed unicorn horn. To get rid of some of the water to mm. make it more intense. And yeah, some crushed unicorn horn. Forms a sort of gelatin. Yeah, exactly. And then they were like, here, Trisha, drink this. Well, I usually like very sweet things. And heck, I'll eat anything if you tell me that some sugar's in it. But I don't know about this. I know. I think it's really fit for cooking and cooking your own. Italy has had finer moments, I must say. <laughs> the works of Michelangelo. And Silvio Berlusconi. And uh, Guglielmo Marconi. And um, what's that one called? Um, you Luigi know... Pirandello? Yeah, him. Um... All of these people have done better work, well, except Silvio Berlusconi. Who's that one? Than this particular wine. Not uh, Charo, wine. but the, um, the Cicciolina. That's what I was thinking of. This tastes probably like um, Cicciolina's skin. You know, I think Cicciolina was married to Jeff Koons, and she was a porn star, but then she made it into the Parliament of Italy, and then she had a talk show. Hmm. Cicciolina. That's the interesting thing about drinking Italian wine, is that... All kinds of comparisons you know, with Italy's rich cultural history exactly. come to mind. The Often gorgeous. unfavorable gorgeous. In, mm. for this, yes. Mm -mm. Oops, I got some on me now. Mm. Does and it I... taste any better when it's absorbed through the skin? As frogs taste wine? So far, I would say no. So far, I would say all it does is make me think, I must put these wash you know <clears throat> seeing as this is a complete failure yeah as a drinking wine yes can you uh suggest something that you might cook it in mm. ah there's all sorts of chicken and marsala related recipes i think you could probably also use it with um pork because pork benefits from a little sweetness and this also has like a touch of sourness so you could work it that way i think you could probably i think I think there's a lot of stuff you could just throw it in 
But what I would do with this bottle is I would just leave it by the stove. Just leave it by the stove and let the inspiration come to you. But this is what I do. This is like a hierarchy I have. It's like, you know, like um, a sort of an orphanage of wines or something. Like there are the wines that I keep in the living room. Those are for drinking. And then there are the wines that I just like gather around the stove, like children around a little fire at night. And they're for cooking. And they are just used as as the fit comes upon me. So I think that that's what this is marked. I think if you it. melted a candy cane, it would taste like this. Do you think so? I don't think I, I don't get any mint. And took away the mint. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I'd say on a scale of one to ten, I'd give this a one. Yeah. Nah. You you agree? Is that also a one? No, I, I never agree with you. Right. Um, I'd have to say probably a zero point five. 0 0.5. 0 0.5. For an Average overall St. John wine times grade of 0 0.75. 0 0.75.